this morning and every morning, we know your love, your true love, and provision for our daily needs, O oh God. This morning, we join our voices in praise and prayer, publicly proclaiming our gratitude and invoking your continued care for us in body, mind, and spirit. Through Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Our scripture reading is um, Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindness, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption the glory of the covenants, the living, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. O oh Lord, have mercy on all of us. As we come this morning, just thanking you. We praise that we come together in spirit and in truth, lifting up you this morning, God. So we thank you for this opportunity to worship virtually in the midst of situations that are still unfolding. God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you have done and you are doing and you will do. And as your daughter, as I sit at this desk, pray to the words of my mom. That it just my heart is acceptable in your sight, for you are my son. This is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. <clears throat> and we continue our journey acknowledging the role we play as Christians, considering the events of today. As we watch these events unfold, we are presented with the relationship between truth and trust. Trust is a belief in someone's ability. Truth is the quality of being factual. Trust follows truth. And we trust another person when we know that they are telling us the truth, no matter how difficult it is to tell that truth, and regardless of the circumstances. The ability to navigate the three pandemics that we are experiencing depends on people leading us, telling us the truth. The person's record for truth-telling in the past directly affects our belief in his or her word. We seek truth regarding our safety as we deal with the health crisis that continues to unfold with this opportunistic virus. We seek the truth of things that happen to people of color and other minority groups, knowing that the stories that were told were altered, knowing that we all desire to have equitable treatment in this land. We seek the truth about the economic divide and how the imbalance of wealth was acquired at the expense of the poor. We trust that the individ individuals in charge will stop crying wolf so that the people can be protected because we are in trouble. The word truth is used more than 200 times in the Bible, depending on the translation. For instance, it appears 228 times in the New International Version, 224 times in the King James Version, and 269 times in the New Living Translation as examples. The Old Testament's use of truth generally means that the person is constant. They are permanent. They are faithful. They are reliable. God is truth. Someone or something that is true will stand up under testing. In the New Testament, truth is known. It is a correct knowledge. It is the avoidance of false beliefs. When I was growing up, not telling the truth was frowned upon to the point that we were admonished for it. We weren't allowed to use the word lie. Lie was like cursing someone. It was an attack on a person's character. It meant that something that you said or someone that something that someone else said was important enough that we were expected to believe them. If they were not telling the truth, that was harmful to who we are. It meant something to hear someone say, you have my word, because your word was your bond. To this day, I hesitate to call someone a liar. 
I sometimes feel that truth and trust is manipulated to the point that it does not hold the same value that it used to. As a Christian, the Bible is our standard. So truth and trust are important in relationships. We must think that it's important enough that we live by it because Christ is our example. Now you may think what I'm about to say is a little extreme, but I'm gonna share it anyway. I do not play games where you have to bluff. So I won't be a good person at game night if you're playing bluffing games because the winner has to be good enough to win by not telling the truth. I don't watch the show to tell the truth because there is a real person and two imposters who answers questions to convince a panel of people that they are the person that was presented by the host. And sometimes someone tells a non-truth well enough that they have someone else believing that they are who they are not. The show says that the imposters are allowed to lie, but the main character must tell the truth. And I also didn't play the game truth or dare. I believe that there are things that people don't need to know about me. So I'm sure that I would have been dared a lot. And sometimes the dares were really gross. So if that sounds strange to you, that's a little bit more of who I am. We are also legally reminded when we go to court to tell the truth because they ask us to raise our hand and place a hand on the Bible and they tell us to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And the reality of it, it means nothing if you don't believe in God. And if you see the Bible, it's just a book of words. Whether it's a board game, a card game, a game show, a verbal game, or reports by our leaders, the truth seems to have lost its worth. I admit that I do think it's funny when I hear someone say, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Because I know that that's code for, this isn't the whole truth. But besides that, we expect people to be truthful when they talk to us. We must build relationships, believing that the person is trustworthy. Because trustworthiness is still a good attribute and a sound foundation for a good relationship. It takes time to build a good reputation for being trustworthy. But it only takes a moment or an instant to lose it. Actively trying to deceive someone goes against the core of our beliefs as we strive to be like Christ. It is most likely the Old Testament that Paul is thinking about when he says, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. Since God is truth, it extends to Christ and to the Holy Spirit. So most likely that's who he's referring to. We are guided into this truth in our relationship with God as we worship God in spirit and in truth. And as we know the truth and the truth will set us free. And as followers, when asked, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Our goal in life, my brothers and sisters, is to be a people of truth, trusting in the word of God. The relationship Paul wishes for the listeners that are around him is very important. It's so important to him that he is aware that people may not trust him based on his past. They may be struggling with who he used to be because Paul was a persecutor of people who followed the way. And the way was how they described the followers of Christ. Now, Paul is willing to sacrifice himself for the people who are around him so that they can find the truth in Christ, not in his words, but in Christ's words. He wishes to be cut off on behalf of his adopted brothers and sisters. That shows how deep of a commitment he has to the way. And he wants that to be life for the people who are around him. In chapter eight, if you remember from my message and Pastor Lenora's message that he was very adamant about how people saw the word of God. He even tells them that in all things we are more than conquerors. And he tells them that he is convinced that there is nothing that will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Rome during that time was filled with diverse people and diverse people have diverse beliefs. But Paul wants them to see the truth 
in the belief based on Christ's reputation, not his. Paul's challenge is still our challenge today. It is what keep we are to keep people focused on God's truth, knowing the times that challenge us that we face today. Paul is telling the people that there is more to the story that they may have learned in their lives. More to the story that they were taught. There is more to the story of their being. He wants them to know that because they are adopted, that the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises belong to them too as adopted children. And you may wonder what are those promises. Well, some of those promises are this, Deuteronomy 28.9. If we keep his commandments, God will bless us abundantly. Joshua 1.9 says to be strong and courageous. Encourage others to not be discouraged. God is with us. 1 Samuel 16.7 said God will send us a leader because the Lord does not see as mortals. We look at outside appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that God has plans for our welfare, not to harm us, but to give us future with hope. Matthew 6, 33 says, when we seek first the kingdom of God, all things that we worry about, what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear, will be given to us because God knows that we need them. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give us the spirit of fear but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline, which is also a sound mind and self-control. Over time, we build our own truths, and we have our own truths that were taught by some of the things that we have witnessed in life. But God is the truth, and that is what our faith is built upon. God, Paul wants his adopted brothers and sisters to find the truth of the gospel so they too can have hope in Christ. He wants them to see the truth that is in Christ. Challenges in our lives today, they have the potential to separate us from each other and from God. But those same challenges would not separate God from us. God is always with us. The listeners were asked to consider how they saw their lives, what they learned, and how they lived them. For us as United Methodist Christians, we have the quadrilateral is a big is to help us reconsider how we see our lives as it compares to scripture. And the quadrilateral is the scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. We wrestle with the revelations we see today. And in the midst of what we see, we must consider anew what is outlined in the scriptures. Are we living according to the scriptures? We must consider our traditions and how scripture focuses us on how we look at the situations that we see today. We have to look through the lens of the scriptures. We also must consider our experiences and how scripture defines it in light of the truth. And we must consider what is reasonable as followers of Christ and be positive influences on the things that we are confronted with. God's truth is the truth. That is our measuring device. 
if the decisions that are being made don't line up with God's truth for God's creation. We must be like Paul and remind others that we are all God's children and God's promises are for all of God's creation. People of color know that to be true. People of different cultures know that to be true. People who choose to love who they love know that to be true. People who are female and want equity and equality know that to be true. People who settle from different countries and should not be labeled illegal know that to be true. People with differing abilities know that to be true. People who struggle in a rich nation know that. We cannot judge the truth of God's word by human understandings. We must seek and speak the truth in Christ. And then we'll be assured by the spirit that it is indeed God who is speaking to us. Because God rules over all things. And knowing that God is blessed forever. And we are blessed as his children. Amen.